welcome to Art in the Brain. I'm Kelly Drake, and today I want to talk about the wonderful world of soft pastels. Now lately I've been working on a children's book called A Boy in a Tall Tree, and as I've been working on these illustrations, I decided that there are quite a few things that I do now that if I had known a few years ago would have really saved me a lot of time and a lot of trouble. And so I thought I would start by sharing those with you now. First thing was choosing the right paper. I finally came upon this UART paper and it comes in different grits. It's a sandpaper and just like sandpaper it comes in like a fine tooth and more of a coarse tooth. Now I've decided after trying the 600 grit and the 800 grit, I've decided that the 400 is actually much better for me. At first I thought that the really fine tooth sandpaper would be better for details, but as I soon found out, I filled up that tooth so fast with pastel that by the time I got ready for my details, there was no room left in the tooth of the paper to put any more pastel on top. It would just fall off. And so I've just finally decided to settle on this 400 grit paper. Now I want to talk about uh, how to start with this paper. I cut it into the size I need and I use paper or rather painter's tape to tape it to the board. I really like this 3M painter's tape. It seems to be the best for me. It's not too sticky and yet it comes up um, when I want it to without tearing the paper. So I tape all four sides and then I measure the area of the image that I want it to be with some um, dead space around the outside of the image. And the reason I do this is so that if I ever want to frame this piece, there's some leeway there where I can have the mat come over and um, I won't be missing any of the image when I'm at it and frame it. So I'm just measuring that out and then I use my blue 3M tape um, to mask that image so that when I take the tape up I have a nice clean edge. And I just put little tiny pencil marks there really lightly so that I can figure out where the tape goes. Now it's funny to me when I look at this, I feel like this is a real no-brainer. Um, but it's funny when I think about it, when I first started using pastel, I did not tape the board down, or the paper onto the board, and I did not mask my image. So my pastels go all the way to the edge. But if you think about ever framing that image, you'd always have to float it. You'd never be able to use matte over the top, or you're losing some of your image. Uh, not to mention that the mat really can't touch the pastel. So it's really important that you leave this, this blank border all the way around. And you can decide how big you want that border to be. It can be anything from, um, I'd say, a half an inch up to two inches, depending on um, what you want to do with it. Um, but just taping it off is really simple, and it gives you a nice movable piece to move around when you want to tap your pastel off, which I will show you here in a little bit, and um, also when you need to get a different angle on your piece. I really like to use gator board as my uh, drawing board here. It's really nice and smooth, it's really nice and hard, and it uh, so it won't get indentations in it or scratches or anything that might show through on your pastel work and it's so nice and lightweight you can move it around and um, very easily. Uh, I don't recommend it too much for taking it outside if you're doing plein air pieces because it can also blow around in the wind <laughs> which I've found out a couple times but it's really great for studio work and you can order packs of these cut to size and that's what I did here. I ordered some um, I believe this is 15 by 20 boards and I have about 10 of them and so I can work on several pieces at once and I can also use these boards for my watercolor works which you may see in some of my other videos. So sometimes it's called gator board, sometimes it's called gator foam board but either way it's a really nice backing. Now next I want to talk about choosing your pastels. 
My first pastels that I got were nice. They were Rembrandt pastels. Um, but what I didn't realize is they were very hard uh, for pastels. So when people talk about that really nice buttery soft feeling you get from pastels when you're drawing on paper, they really weren't like that. They were a little more scratchy. And um, although they would last a really long time and I could draw on anything with them, um, they didn't really blend very well. Or at least I should say they did blend, but they didn't blend quite as easily as the softer pastels. And so then I tried some Sennelier pastels. And um, those were much nicer. They were much softer and I could blend a lot of them. The only thing that was strange about those is that with the different pigments, they had different consistencies. And so some pigments were very soft and blended very well, and other pigments were kind of hard and scratchy. And so the thing I found out later about Sennelier pastels is that they don't add a lot of additives to these pastels to change the texture. So the texture of the pigment that you get with these pastels is going to be the texture that that pigment gives you. Um, other kind of pastel companies actually add um, more uh, whatever they add, chalk or, or whatever it is, to make those pastels softer and more blendable, no matter what pigment you have. And so it's nice. Um, I really like the Sennelier pastels, but every once in a while if I want a certain pigment to be softer and more blendable, I'll pick up another uh, kind of pastel. So. Um, some, I've gotten some of these Unison pastels, which are very nice and soft. And also, I've gotten the Thin Line pastels, the Diane Townsend Thin Line pastels, as well as Schmincke. And all those have been nice and soft and blendable. So it's up to you what you want to do with your pastels and how soft you want them. And make sure that you talk to someone who knows a lot about pastels before you pick out a brand and buy a large set, um, as I did, a couple large sets before you found out what they're really like. And uh, I think it's nice to have a set of very soft pastels and um, in lots of different tints and shades. And then you can add to that from there. I found a really good resource is Dakota Art Pastels and so if you look them up online you can give them a call or ask them for a catalog and in their catalog they rate different pastel sets from soft to hard. Now this is a, my Rembrandt pastels, the ones I started out with that are harder and this is something they're really good at is making a nice clear line and uh, going over other pastel with that line. And so that comes in handy once in a while, especially if you're trying to work in some detail. Now starting out here with a, a new piece, I found that this is really helpful if I tint the background. And before I was actually tinting the background, I had seen a video on YouTube with someone I really admired and she had been using gouache um, to tint the background. But what I didn't realize is she was using gouache to create texture on a smooth piece of paper to create a pastel painting surface. But I was painting the gouache on the sandpaper, which was really self-defeating because what it did was it was filling up the tooth of the paper and so that if I didn't have a coarse enough grit, the paper would already be full of paint. So by the time I started putting on pastel, I put on one or two little layers and it was already full. And so at that point, you can't put any more pastel on um, or it just falls off. It just uh, flakes off like sand or dust. So now I have learned to use pastel to tint the background and to tap the dust off and uh, rub it in and then it makes a really nice tinted background um, that really uses a minimal amount of the tooth of the paper. 
Okay, when I say tap off the extra dust, I mean have some newsprint or something taped to your table and you can tap your board just like this and get the extra dust off um, whenever you see it on there. If you put new pastel on, make sure to tap your board before you go on to blend it. And this will do a couple things. One, it will keep the dust in a safe place where you're not breathing it, so don't blow it into the air around you. And then also, it will keep the pastel from filling up the tooth of the paper too fast. Now I just want to talk about blending. Um, when I first started, I thought I wanted to blend with my fingers because that's the way I draw with charcoal. And I think of charcoal and pastel as somewhat similar. And so I would blend with my finger back and forth and back and forth until it was blended. Um, but what I learned uh, from a great teacher that I have in town here, her name is Lisa Gilly. And if you think of it, look up her artwork, it's really beautiful. Um, but what she told me was to go ahead and just use one finger at a time in one direction and then clean that finger off and then go to the next finger. And so instead of going back and forth with all my fingers and making kind of a muddy mess, now I know that I should go in one direction along the line that I want to follow with one finger and then clean that finger off. And so what I do is I keep a paper towel in my lap and I wipe each finger off as I go. And so each finger is pretty much clean uh, when I touch the pastels. I definitely don't want to transfer one color to another. There you can see switching fingers and then wiping them off and then switching fingers again. I don't want to transfer one color to another area and I don't want to wipe back and forth where I make um, just mud out of it. I want the colors to be clear and I just want to blend them. And now on to how to make corrections if you've made a mistake or if you want to change something. I've found in my experimentation that using a pretty soft brush, this is an old acrylic brush that I have, to brush out some of the pastel that's on there where I want to make the correction really works well. And part of the reason is because it gives me a cleaner surface in which to draw on and then also it takes a lot of that extra pastel out of the tooth of the paper and so I'm not trying to draw on top um, yet another layer of pastel because I tend to put it on pretty thick and um, by the time I've gotten to this point if I don't brush out some of that pastel um, it's not going to work very well I'm not going to still have enough tooth to add another few layers. So I use my brush and just lightly brush that area out and then I go over that area again with the colors I used originally. Like here I want to get um, some of the sky in there and like narrow that tree trunk. So I want to use the colors uh, of the sky that I've already put in there and make sure to make my strokes go in the same direction that they went before. So once you've brushed the pastel off, make sure to tap off the extra dust and then you're free to use your pastel to correct the area. And then you can use your finger to blend it into the background. And this process works really well for me. It actually would be difficult um, once it's all done to notice that that area has been corrected. Okay, now I just really want to tell you about these great little tools that I've been using. These are called soft color shapers, and you could get them at Dakota Pastel and probably other art supply shops. But they're just like little, they look like uh, paintbrushes but with rubber tips. And they have all sorts of different shapes. And one I got was kind of a chisel shape and the other one is a pointed shape. But as you can see when you're doing detail work, these are really nice to clean up the edges. Um, sometimes you can use them for blending if there's a lot of pastel down. And sometimes you can use them to lift the pastel off. Um, 
and so you just have to experiment a little bit with these but they're really nice because they come in a lot of different shapes like I said and um, you could choose the shapes that work best for you. So now I want to talk about choosing your pastel pencils. My first pastel pencils that I got were called Derwent pastel pencils and they are pretty nice but I was having trouble with one um, having them be too wide and so they wouldn't fit in my pencil sharpener so I was having a hard time figure out how to um, sharpen these pencils. Uh, I couldn't get them into the pencil sharpener so I had to use an X-Acto knife um, either that or I had to get a pencil sharpener with a wider um, opening and uh, then I was having trouble with them breaking while I was trying to sharpen them. Second of all, they were pretty hard and scratchy, and so I was having trouble um, using these to make to do detail on my pastel paintings because they wouldn't blend with the other pastels and they kind of scratch the other pastel off. So then I got a second box of pastels, which I love, which are called um, Design by Brunzeel. And these Brunzeel pencils are just really nice. They're smaller, so they fit in my pencil sharpener. So I have usually no trouble sharpening them in my electric pencil sharpener because it's fast and it's sharp and uh, they usually do not break off, which is really nice. Um, also, they're quite a lot softer than the Derwent pencils. And so they work much better with my softer pastels in using them. Um, to do any kind of detail work. So if I'm working on a character and I need to do their hair, these are the pencils I usually go to. Also, I've had to add a few colors to my set, and so I've added a couple other brands that I also really like. Um, one is called Stabilo Carbothello. Hope I'm saying that right. And the other brand is Carandosh and also Criticolor. These are all nice, soft, uh, really great uh, pastel pencils that you can use and I would advise getting a set of one of these brands and then adding colors as you need them. So when I first started doing pastels a few years ago, I thought you could use workable fixative as you went along to just fix different layers as you went and protect them so that you could continue to work. And what I found was that fixative just filled up the tooth of the paper really fast. And so I ran out of tooth and filled up everything with pastel and fixative and I was unable to finish the piece. Uh, as I said before, if you fill up the tooth, you have nothing more to work with and your pastel just falls off like dust. And so I highly recommend waiting to the very end or very close to the end before you fix your piece. I can recommend two good fixative brands and the first is Lescal and that's the can that you see me using here. And the other is Daler Rowney. Both of those will do a really good job of protecting your pastel and also uh, will not change the color so much so that you'll be happy with the result. One more way that you can use fixative is as you get close to the end of your piece, you can actually use fixative to add a little bit of tooth at the end. So if you've run out of tooth and you really need to add just a couple more details or some highlights, it's a good time to use a few coats of fixative, letting it dry in between, and then uh, putting on your highlights or your details, and then giving it its last spray of fixative. And last but not least, I want to talk about using glycine paper to protect your pastels. Um, I use a small sheet of glycine paper to protect my pastel painting as I'm working on it. Uh, especially as I get to the later stages and I want to rest my hand on the painting as I draw. So this is an example of a small piece of glassine that I cut off. Uh, this comes in pretty large rolls and I just keep a roll handy all the time because I use a lot of it when I'm doing pastel work. Um, this is one of the ways I use it and the other way I use it is to 
protect my piece once it's completely done and before it's framed. And so, like right now, I'll finish this piece and I'll put a piece of glassine over it and tape it in the back and then just leave it like that in my flat file. And then I can go ahead and pile other pastels on top as long as each one is protected by a piece of glassine. Um, I know that they won't rub or smear or scratch. And so this has really been valuable. When I first started doing pastel work, I thought it was okay to protect with a little wax paper. Um, and I found out it's just not as smooth and uh, protective as this glassine paper. It may look similar, but it's really not as good. So if you can afford to get a roll of this, it's not too expensive and it's really well worth the price to protect your pastel work. So that's all my pastel tips for now. I've enjoyed sharing those with you and I really hope they help you as much as they've helped me. And now don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and stop by and check out my webpage, my Facebook page, or take a look at my Instagram account if you'd like to learn more about me, my art, and my children's book illustrations.